The importance of broadband networks to the global digital economy has become very apparent during 2020, and there are plenty of exciting developments in the fixed broadband technology and services sector. I'm chatting today with Karol Kowalik. He is Technical Development Manager at Polish Network Operator Enea. So, Carol, you're leading the technology development uh, team at Anea. Can you tell us about the company's next-gen fiber network strategy? Basically, for the next uh, uh, years, uh, we'll be focused on the ge geographical expansion, since our plan is to double the size of our network within the next two years. At the same time, we want to deliver the best services to our customers. Therefore, uh, we need to follow the uh, expansion and the development of the next generation uh, FTTH technologies in order to cope with that. Okay, great. Now, Inea is one of the biggest wholesale operators in Poland. Uh, what are the challenges related to wholesale broadband operations? And do you think that the evolution towards software-defined access network architectures could help? Indeed, we strongly believe in the wholesale access, and that's why we opened our uh, network under the Fiberhost brand. Uh, it was the year 2017 when, when we have realized that we can uh, increase the penetration of our network uh, using the other service providers, and we uh, switched to this open access approach. The main challenge in, uh, is for us organizational, how to uh, switch the organization from the uh, which was so far focused on the retail to this dual mode of operation, whole, uh, wholesale and the retail. And answering your question related to the software-defined access network, we are still not, not sure if this is the technology which will help us to deliver better wholesale services. Uh, even though we see that there are some international players who demand for uh, network slicing achieved using software-defined uh, access uh, network, uh, uh, this should be like a replacement for the bitstream access in order to allow service providers to fine tune their services and to, to protect uh, uh, the service creation process. Uh, however, in Poland, we see that uh, uh, most of the service providers uh, are, requ are requiring only, only the bitstream uh, access and they don't have any need for the network slicing yet. Okay, interesting. Um, so, what role will Nokia play in your network evolution plans? Uh, you know, how can uh, Nokia uh, help to fulfill your business objectives? Mm -hmm. uh, we have good record of uh, collaboration. This is uh, over uh, 10 years of collaboration between INEA and Nokia related to the FTTH technologies. And so far, Nokia was able to provide us with uh, well-developed products at competitive prices. And at the same time, they were able to provide with us was with test equipment uh, of, for, of the new technologies uh, even uh, before they entered the massive white market. Okay, excellent. Um, so uh, Inea was one of the, or was the first operator in Poland and one of the first in Europe to, to start offering 10G services using XGPON technology. That was in 2018. So uh, do you see XGSPON as a game changer? What was the reason behind introducing 10 gigabit services? Uh, and what are the key takeaways after two years of using XGSPON tech? Yeah, I would even come back to the 2016 when we have first introduced the one gigabit services. We have, uh, after introducing these services, we have already started to think about what is the next uh, speed barrier which we can uh, cross. And so we immediately started to look for uh, new technologies uh, which uh, would allow us to deliver uh, higher speed uh, services. Also from 2017, uh, we are uh, uh, providing the fastest internet in Poland according to the speedtest.pl ranking. And in order to maintain that uh, leader position, uh, we need to uh, deliver faster and faster services. Therefore, when XGS Pond became uh, available commercially, we immediately made the decision to deploy uh, XGS Pond uh, network in our technology. However, the XGS Pond technology um, consumes of around 13% of bandwidth due to a forward error connection mechanism. 
and therefore we can deliver only services up to 8.5 gigabits per second. However, we, we plan to deliver uh, full 10 gigabit symmetrical services for our customers. Uh, therefore, now we are looking towards 25G technologies. Okay, uh, we'll come to 25G in a minute, but uh, just coming back to the XGS pond, uh, what have been the implications on your network and, and what other changes did, did the introduction of that technology allow you to, to bring to your, to your services or your technology enablement? Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, when we introduced that technology into our network, we needed to, to increase the uh, capacity of uh, our aggregation and the core network. Also, all the XGS PON OLT so are connected to an aggregation network using uh, 25G or uh, higher speed, uh, uh, 25G or higher speed uh, links. Uh, and uh, now we can say that uh, the network is fully capable of delivering uh, 10 gigabit services. In terms of other uh, like technologies or uh, de delivering higher speed Wi-Fi, uh, we are now providing services using uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi 5 uh, and MIMO uh, 4x4. And uh, in the near future, we would like to deliver the services using Wi-Fi 6 with MIMO 4x4 as well. Okay, excellent. Um, so you've recently trialed 25G PON with Nokia. Uh, what's your view on the kind of use cases that this technology can bring? Mm -hmm. As I've already mentioned, uh, we plan to use uh, 25G PON technology in order to deliver 10 gigabit uh, symmetrical services because uh, operator needs to have a higher capacity than, than the maximum service it, it provides in order for the statistical network uh, planning to work properly. Therefore, this is our main goal to de deliver 10 gigabit services. Okay. And um, uh, is there a business services opportunity here using this technology? Um, so far, uh, the demand for 10 gigabit services, uh, we see both for, from the um, uh, business customers, but also residential ones. Uh, we see that there are some uh, um, uh, residential customers who are like working uh, remotely from home. Maybe it's more of a Soho customers, uh, which demand high bandwidth, which need to uh, uh, upload like uh, big images to the cloud and uh, uh, therefore, they, 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 they also need it. So uh, I think we, this, this type of uh, technology uh, is either serving businesses so, or uh, more demanding uh, residential customers. Okay. So obviously, 2020 has been a very challenging year. Um, what kind of changes have you seen in customer behavior during the, the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, and, and how has any been coping with that? Mm -hmm. Uh, indeed, we have observed the increased uh, uh, demand for the network capacity uh, and uh, like a 25 increase for the uh, bandwidth on the downlink and 20% uh, increase of the bandwidth demand for uplink. But uh, this is what we have prepared for uh, in the past. Like uh, we have invested in FTTH network and we have over provisioned it with capacity in order to deliver the best services, because this is the speed was always what we fight it for. So uh, uh, we treat this uh, uh, pandemic uh, period as a big uh, quality test for us. And so far we, we passed it really well and we have delivered the best services with the best quality for our customers. Okay, excellent. Well, I hope that continues to be the case. Uh, Carol, thanks very much for talking to us today and letting us know how Aenea is moving forward with its services and its network. Thanks very much. Thank you.